So I was standing there um, getting ready for the mountain and I was like, I'm either going to have a freaking panic attack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm either going to have a panic attack or I'm going to achieve the greatest moment of my life. I'm not yes. sure. Good as Gold, the official Gold's Gym Australia podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Good As Gold podcast. We are your hosts, M and Cal. Yeah, huge episode today. We have the Australian Ninja Warrior winner, Ben Polson. We're going to talk all things training, visualization, bullying, and of course, how to win $400,000. This is an episode you do not want to miss. Strap yourself in. Let's welcome in Ben. Ben, thank you so, so much for joining us. You are the first guest on the podcast. Super exciting times. Yeah. Welcome Guys, in. Good How to be are here. you? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Good, good, good. Um, so, please introduce yourself. Tell yes. the people who you are. <clears throat> who am I? Good question. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, so, I think we all are. No, I think. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm mainly known from Ninja Warrior. Uh, that's where most people know me from, Australian Ninja Warrior. I've done five seasons now, and I was fortunate enough to win the fourth season and uh, take out the grand champion prize along with $400,000, which also wow. helped change my life yeah. slightly. Yeah. Uh, well, not slightly, quite a lot. <laughs> um, and then I've kind of transitioned from that over to now uh, putting a lot of my time and energy into uh, everything that I've learned over the years from Ninja, I'm passing that knowledge on to other people through mainly videos and, and YouTubing. Um, so, and I have creative passions like uh, making music as well. Yep. Uh, I had a bit of a side hustle career of music before Ninja. So I've lived a few lives. Um, yeah. Nice. Because that would kind of like coincide like Ninja by night, you would usually think, but you would like DJ night ninja daytime that's right all those years of djing and staying up late um you know prepared me for the mental battle of ninja warrior yeah. all five wow. seasons so yeah that's amazing so ben let's go back i want to go back mm -hmm. to your younger years talk to us a little bit about what your world was like kind of growing up um you know i guess from you know early childhood all the way up until mm. i guess now good question yeah <laughs> um a few juicy details in the old childhood isn't there um i think you know, growing up, I was very much uh, like I haven't been diagnosed, but I'm sure I'd be somewhere on the spectrum of ADHD. Yeah. I was in the in the back of the class, leaning on my chair, fiddling mm -hmm. with my pen, playing finger skateboards, uh, just not concentrating. And then when it came to like phys ed uh, or some sort of media related thing, I would crush it and I loved it. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so high school probably wasn't exactly my jam. I got, uh, you know. Moving from primary school to high school was a big change because all of a sudden you're, you know, you're a smaller kid in a bigger pond and people aren't so nice all the time. And mm -hmm. so I started to find out what anxiety was and, and what sad feelings were and yeah. being scared to go to school because a lot of the bullies kind of came out and started to tease me for the way I looked uh, and, the th and the things that I was into, like playing the trumpet and juggling and magic, you know, all the things which get the ladies going. Yeah. Hello, uh, <laughs> have we heard of Timmy Trumpet? He's like the biggest DJ ever playing the trumpet. Yeah. Are you kidding? That's very true. Maybe true. if I stuck at it, I had something in the <laughs> trumpet game. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, so unfortunately, I um, yeah went through a fair few years of of pretty intense bullying. Where day to day, I was pretty scared to go to school. I'd wow. you know cry myself to sleep at night, and and I was just quite afraid to walk around every corner just because there was a select few people which would always make remarks and kind of point me out. Mm. You know, if the teacher left the class, I would just freeze because I knew that all of a sudden it's free reign for those bullies yeah. to immediately turn around and make jokes. Uh, about me. So, mm. um, but what that taught me though, is as much as it sucked at the time, it, um, it built up a huge amount of resilience at a yeah, young age. Sure. And I think that mental fortitude that it built up of, uh, of learning, of being forced on how to, how to deal with that kind of stuff really stuck with me as I moved then, um, out of high school and started to put my energy into, into health and fitness and, and joined a gym and uh, started kind of putting it into that direction, which then slowly transitioned year after year into Ninja Warrior yeah. and, um, and you know, not being afraid of taking on a challenge because mm. I was challenged so much in high school. Yeah, so obviously like finishing high school was kind of a turning point for you to just, I mean, that whole side of 
you know, possibly being bullied or, or whatever would be gone. And then I guess you yeah. were like free to do or find like totally. I mean, push more yeah, of your... Free to be um, whoever you wanted to be yeah, as without well. Having that yeah, it's, hanging over. it's yeah. a great way to put it. Um, it totally was freedom because, you know, especially... Uh, freedom as far as I now have time to do what I want, but also there's no one around me telling me that I shouldn't be doing that or laughing yeah. at me yeah. when, you know, I upload a video of me juggling and I'm so proud of it. And then mm. the kids at school discover that video and start teasing yeah. me about it. And so I immediately delete it, mm. you know, like there's none of that around you. And, and what ends up happening is, especially when you join, um, for me, it was a gym and finding the right gym where then I, all of a sudden, these are my people, you know, yeah. mm. like there's not a, a, a room full of random kids which all have random different interests which clash. These are the people which um, I can get along with because we have this passion about around fitness and health. Mm. And so I started to make more friends within those kind of circles and uh, they were true friends, you know. Yeah. They weren't just kind of people mm. I had to hang out with at school. So about like that yeah. positive community. And it's funny, like we see totally. it, um, a lot like I, I know like I'm guessing from what I'm hearing like they didn't really – they put you down but it didn't stop you from – pursuing what you wanted to do right so like you wanted to juggle you do it and i'm sure they put a dampener on it because they're like you suck mm. because you juggle <laughs> but i mean and putting that into say perspective of going to a, a, a ninja gym or like a new gym where you're like new people mm -hmm. new moves new techniques yeah it's a different type of like it's encouragement right mm. they're like oh like you nearly got there let's try it again as opposed to be like you suck totally. never come back and it's just that yeah yeah i mean it is a balancing is, act in a sense of like it is totally different you're, you're right um and like i was fortunate to have really awesome parents which supported me uh, especially my dad like he was just super stoked as soon as i showed interest yeah. in sports yeah. so he was always like he was the dad which taking me down to the park and like working on my um you know my batting technique yeah. or this or that or how to mm. kick a footy. Um, but then, uh, yeah, you're totally right. Once you kind of leave high school, um, the, the real world real world opens up and and it's up to you what you want to do and, mm. and who you want to surround yourself with. Mm. And uh, finding a place like Ninja Academy, which is the first ninja gym I discovered in, uh, in Osborne Park in Perth, uh, that place just changed my entire life. Mm -hmm. Like it really changed my life. Um, and a big part of that is the community that comes along with with Ninja, not just the physical aspect, but yeah. also, you know, it's one thing rocking up to a gym and just trying to motivate yourself. It's another oh, thing rocking totally, up and yeah. seeing all your best mates and swinging around like monkeys. You know? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> I want to know if you could go back 10 years ago, even 15 <clears throat> years ago, you know, when you were, were getting bullied, um, what would you tell your younger self? Hmm, great question. Um, I think... You know, I, I feel like there's kind of two, two parts to this. Um, the first part is the like immediate tangible things that you can do mm. as a kid mm. um, because I think far too often people just say like, I just ignore it, you know, and it's it's not really super practical advice for kids yeah. um, because it's hard to ignore. So I think um, the first part is mentioning to your friends or, or whoever that you feel that you can trust um, just letting them know what's going on and how you're feeling. And yeah. especially if those people start to maybe make a couple of remarks, uh, jokes, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're your friends. They, you should, they should be the people which you feel comfortable Absolutely. and calling them out and going, yeah. hey, when you said that, actually, I just want to let you know that I didn't appreciate it. Because mm. I've also been in a situation where I've made jokes about my mates and I just think it's a joke. And they end up coming and tell, telling me, yeah. you know, a couple of days later, yeah. hey, actually, that really affected me. Yeah. And that changed who I was because I was like, wow, maybe I'm doing that more often than I yeah, originally thought. Yeah, I'm hurting thought. people I really love. Yeah, yeah. Mm. totally. Um, so definitely talking about it and mentioning it, not just bottling it up is, is one thing. Yeah. Um, and, and then also um, the more long-term thing which changed for me was changing my perspective on what a bully actually is and who that person is. Yeah. Um, because we see them as this big scary thing yeah. which like is just uh, you know surrounding us and they're up here. But in reality... People don't wake up. Um, if people wake up and they're happy, they don't go around make, making mean mistakes, yeah. you know. Um, so generally I started to realize, well, these people probably aren't that happy themselves. And yeah. maybe they go home and get bullied by their exactly. parents or their dad. And and I started to feel empathetic for these people because I would hate to be walking around being mean to people. It wouldn't feel very good for me. Mm. So I started to feel empathy for these people. And eventually it kind of lowered them from up here and being scary totally. to then down here and like I want to help them out, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but that was a long-term process. Oh, totally. And yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I find that, mm-hmm. like, it's so interesting because, like, in school, don't you reckon that, like, this was the be-all and end-all, right? Like, yeah. you going, like, your friendship circles, totally. all, like, all different parts the, the of The hierarchy of, like, where you fit in at school. Yeah, you it, think it's super yeah. important and it then you finish you. and it's like... Oh, I'm no just, one. <laughs> I'm just a lonely boy. Yeah, no, and no, nothing matters, kind yeah. of, in to a degree, you know. And yeah. it's, it's like so interesting because you know normally when people are bullied, after after school they go on to do great things yeah. because they're like, you know what, I am not letting a school bully totally. be the reason why I'm not successful. Yeah, and I think you know, mm-hmm. and it. that's it's a like, testament to you. Yeah. yeah, huge that you yeah were able, Thanks. I guess, to eventually see it at that point, but also then having that like empathy to be like oh, they were hurting and that's why they treated me like mm. this way. I think that's huge. Yeah, mm. um, yeah and it, it's, it's you know, it's, it's very true. I think, and it's not easy to do, to do just like that. Oh, like no. it's, it, yeah. of course, you don't just walk around and all of a sudden you've got a new perspective and yeah. it changes things. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I find that these days I, I almost, I don't get excited when someone says something mean, mm-hmm. but I kind of, I enjoy it a lot more than I used to because <laughs> for me, I see that as an immediate sign of how can I help this person? So, wow. Like, yeah. and I've, I've had crazy stories of, you know, I get mean comments or, or, or messages or whatever from time to time. And yeah. there was one kid in particular who just kept messaging me on Instagram every time I posted something was just negative stuff. Like you really? suck, that's lame, blah, 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 right? And so I replied to this kid with a voice message, which first of all, he probably didn't expect me to oh reply my at gosh. all. <laughs> yes. And then I hit him with a voice message, which is even more personal. Yes. And I just... I didn't acknowledge what he said. I just said, hey, man, I just want to reach out and um, just see how you're doing, how your week's going. Uh, just sending, to, sending you some love from Australia. Um, you know, thanks for reaching out. Mm. Wow. And he came back with another negative comment, blah, 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 something, something. But I just left it, right? Yeah. And then two days later, he messaged me and with this massive message just saying, hey, I'm so sorry. I just had wow. a really weird week. I feel so bad. You're actually such a lovely guy. Um, you wow. know, blah, blah, blah. And he just told me all these details about what he's been going through. I and I was like, there we go. Yeah, yeah okay. I've seen that before where it's like- It's like the classic kill him with kindness. Yeah, people will That's like it. bully on social media and then they'll be like, hey, I really hope you're well. And they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to send this to you. Or like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like- you did. Yeah. You purposely went out of your way to be cruel. It's just not nice. That's right. Well, I want to know, yeah. like, let's go to Ninja Academy now. Yeah. So what sure. made you want to actually, like, where, what was the point that you were like, hey, I want to go try this out? Because, yeah. like, Ninja, like, how long ago was that? Uh, that would have been maybe, like, six years ago, coming up coming up on six years. So maybe like 2015 to 2016, around that around that zone. Because yeah. like Ninja, um, like Ninja gyms weren't really all that huge. popular back then, right? No, no. Yeah. I, in fact, like I, I had seen this show on uh, like SBS late at night, like the Japanese version, <laughs> yes. Sasuke, uh, so which go. is awesome, right? And they're dirty, murky water. Yeah. And, like, and they have to like yeah. run across the lily pads and they sink and- <laughs> Totally, <Man>. yeah. Um, <laughs> So I love that stuff and, and that's where it originated. And then it moved to America and got like yeah. kind of, you know, westernized and, and um, I was watching that. And, and so then when a gym, my mate Will messaged me and he's like, yo, there's this place called like Ninja Academy. I might go check it out if you want to come check it out. And, mm. and so I was like, yeah, well, sure, why not? And, yeah. and that was probably the end of 2015. And, and uh, so I drove there, rocked up. I was like one of the first people to ever check it out. Met the owner. Um, and I remember actually at the time, uh, the owner is, his name is Dave Ravi. And um, I remember meeting him and at the time I was doing CrossFit. I was doing a lot of CrossFit, really mm-hmm. enjoying it. And I remember saying to, to Dave, I was like, hey, it's a cool gym. I might sign up, but just to let you know, um, I, I, I change a lot. Like I lose interest in things pretty quickly. So I'll <laughs> yeah. probably only sign up for like six months. Don't but be offended. We'll see how it goes, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> and he took that as a massive insult. He's like, here's this guy rocking up, telling me that he's probably not even going to stick around yeah. that long. <laughs> um, and here I am six years later, like That's, still going to that gym. Wow. So he That's did a good cool. job. But um, yeah, I think just, just turning up and, and trying out a few things and coming from originally out of high school, it was like just lifting weights, want to get big and strong. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, then it was to CrossFit, more function, like, more like, I guess, I call it functional movement, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. not just strength-based stuff. Yeah. Um, and then into Ninja, which is even less 
weight, you know, heavy, totally. lifting heavy weights based on more and even more on the functional body weight stuff. So I think it was a pretty smooth transition. And, mm. um, before I knew it, I was, I was doing, doing pretty well in local comps. And then I started winning local comps and then I was like, damn boy, like I got to start taking this yes. serious. Yeah. Um, and then the show came out season one, like nine months later. So it was good timing. And so the show came out, you heard it was coming up. How do you, how do you, yeah, how do you approach how do you, so it I, even? Yeah, like how do I go, how would I go about getting into it? Yeah, sure. Um, I, it's, you know, here we are like coming up on season six and it's still the exact same process. So essentially what happens is, you know, you apply on, online and fill out hours worth of paperwork <laughs> I bet. Um, and answer all these ridiculous questions. <laughs> and then you do a physical test. So they'll come around to your city. Sick. And they do an interview process, which was terrifying at the time, like so nervous. Yeah. Um, and then they do a physical test, which ranges year after year, but it's generally like testing your muscular endurance, hanging on a bar for a long time. Yeah. They might do some skipping and some coordination and, and um, just just general fitness stuff. It, it doesn't it doesn't play a ma- it plays a bit of a part in, yeah. in whether you get on the show or not, but not a massive part. I think the biggest deciding factor is your personality and who you are, mm. um, which which I know a lot of people that watch Ninja Warrior are upset by because they're like, well, you know, surely the fittest people should get on the show because it's more entertaining. But I think I disagree. I think I would rather see, you know, old Joe Blow who drives yeah. a bus every week totally. rocking totally, the Ninja yeah. course instead of, you know, a hundred personal trainers. Athletes. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And I think, I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, it's going to sound so cliche, but that's reality TV. Like it yeah. comes down to it. Like I would rather see that same thing too. Like I know like personally, you'd, you'd know people who could like ace parts of life, but mm. I would rather see regular <laughs> people competing or yeah, trying their doing best. Doing like extraordinary things. Yeah, I think I saw like Paul Gowan, yeah. like a football player <laughs> yeah. do it. And yeah. he got, like, yeah, he he got like, like two places in. I'm like, that's still cool because yeah, the guy's a goat when it comes to football, <laughs> but not necessarily <laughs> on the uh, on the ninja course. No. Um, that's right. I want to know though. So obviously you've, you've hit the gym. You've been fit for a while and mm. been doing all your things. You got into Ninja Warrior. When, when did it become like you were saying, like you've tried a lot of different things. You know how you, mm. you're telling your guy at the gym and, when did it stick or like when was you like this is my i don't want to say box because yeah. you're, you're definitely not a box guy but like this is my <laughs> multiple niche. boxes multiple a niche, boxes. Yeah. A niche yeah, almost yeah. like my niche yeah yeah good question you know um like i said well like you know like you just mentioned i i honestly thought i was probably only going to be there for six months because at the time i was just like loving crossfit it was yeah. just so awesome mm. and um uh, I, I came a point where I had to make the decision, do I keep doing CrossFit or do I do Ninja? What's what's the point here? And um, I chose Ninja and I think the biggest factor was definitely because um, of the community that it brought. And I know it sounds cliche yeah. and to the people listening, you've probably heard this a thousand times, but it's just the truth, you know, because at the time I was also dealing with a lot of mental health issues, a lot of anxiety, and I didn't know how to control that. Mm. And um being in that space at Ninja Academy, I would literally just go there on my days off and just hang out in that space because it was such a yeah. nice yeah. space to yeah. be in, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, your entire environment really does change your mood. Like even recently, I've been editing a lot of videos and in this office space, it's okay, but it's it's also it can get dark and lonely. So yeah. I'll go yeah. to a cafe yeah, and yourself. do some work there and yeah. I feel way better. Um, so I think that was a big part of it. It was just for my mental health, it was seeming to, to do really positive things. And um, they also had a, a rock climbing wall there as well. So I started to get more into rock climbing and they had a gymnastics floor. So I started learning how to flip. Awesome. And um, they, it was just full of things. It was like a massive playground for adults. It know? sounds like a, a bunch of like, yeah. I want to go. Yeah, this sounds fun. But We're I think I would def- to definitely be the person just like stand there to watch, but like get the vibes from everyone. Like just be like, this is a yeah. sick place. Look, I'd Feel give inspired. it a crack. <laughs> I'd give it a crack. Well, totally. Callum, actually, you you did calisthenics, right? Yeah. For how many Cal- years? Callum stenics. Callum stenics yeah. is the word we like to say <laughs> around here. Um, it, yeah, a classic just shortens to Cali, right? But, yeah. Um, yeah, Cali. So yeah, probably two two years. Um, okay, nice. But, but like even watching, like I've I've seen your stuff, Ben. I've seen what you do, Cal. It like it takes some serious strength. What was like your? Oh mm. my god, I can actually like. I feel like in CrossFit a muscle up is something that like when you've done a muscle up, you're like, I am now a part of CrossFit. I am. (laughs) But like, what was your point where you were like, okay, I am a ninja warrior. Like I'm doing these things and I, that I never thought I would be able to do. Mm. Do you remember like Um, one specific point? 
Yeah, I think I think for me, I mean, f- first of all, I remember learning my first muscle up during CrossFit, and that was a hell of a moment. I like, know. I I'm telling you, stoked. it's kind of like the hundred <laughs> yeah. club. Like when you bench press a hundred, you're just like, I'm Adonis. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm the jam. I'm basically you know? the goal. No. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think for Ninja, look, everyone's going to have their own individual one. For me, I, I started to realize, wow, I've I'm full I'm full Ninja mode now because there's no yep. way I could have done this like at the start of my Ninja journey. Totally. Was when I did a four meter lache. So lache is from Sorry, like yeah, a run me bar to bar. <laughs> release and catch so um, like and s- swing fly through so you're the swinging air. on a bar then through you release monkey. fly through the air and catch another bar four meters away four and wow. when i hit that i was like hell yeah <laughs> okay like let's go this is ninja mode right yeah. here yeah. Um, and i just fell in love with that so because that's i mean yeah. this is the other thing is like looking at the like being a viewer of ninja yeah. warrior i'm like each stage i look at and i'm like i could give that a crack i could give that a crack I probably could do that one. But then mm. watching you guys do it like... Oh. Like... <laughs> doing it all. <laughs> one after another. Totally. You know what I mean? It's just like not... Like the fatigue on your forearms is like insane. But then even, you know, just backing it up. It's insane to see. Yeah. And on a time limit because you you have to get the fastest time to proceed, right? Yeah. Every mm-hmm. time. So there's like... It's crunch yeah. time. It's, you know... And it's funny because... Uh, a lot of the best ninjas are also very fast and yeah. it's no coincidence because, you know, one of the most famous ninjas we all love in Australia, his name is Ashlyn Herbert yeah. and he's the guy with the long kind of curly hair. Yeah. He's very, very good looking. He's Ashlyn, very, he's good looking if, you, if you're watching. Yeah. Um, and he is ridiculously fast and it's because when you're doing ninja, there's, you know, there's a few factors which kind of come into whether you're successful to even get to the end and hit a buzzer. Um, and one of them is the obvious one, which is your strength and endurance. Mm-hmm. And everyone focuses on that. Everyone that watches the show that doesn't do it just knows you need to be strong and have yeah. good forearm endurance. Um, the other factor, which I consider even more important, is your technique on the obstacles. Yeah. Because if your technique isn't very good, you fall back on the thing that you know really well, which is your strength. Yep. And so you end up just trying to muscle your way through a lot of things and you gas out really fast. And then people think, well, then I just need to train strength more because I keep gassing out. But actually they don't need to train strength more. They need to train their technique to be better mm. so they use less of their strength. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the third factor is your the mindset yeah. and your mentality yeah. because during a training session, you're super relaxed, your heart rate's low and you can cruise through obstacles. But when you get to the show, your heart rate is flying. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, all the those adrenaline. things, all your endorphins are running mm-hmm. and you grip harder. You forget, you hold on and, and you do extra swings because you're nervous. Yeah. And you like start factors. overthinking. Like if you just walked into your local ninja <clears throat> gym and someone was like, do a four meter lache and you'd be like, I'll give it a go. But like, I can imagine <laughs> under the, the pressure, you'd be like, can I, can I do <laughs> this? I even do this? Can I actually do <laughs> totally, this? Totally. Yeah. How do you, it's how do you cope with the pressure? Like, do you have a ritual before every season? Um, like before every <clears> song? A pump up. Yeah. Like, is there a pump up song? Like, give us your secrets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, if, 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 you know, we were saying earlier, we all know one particular ninja by the name of Rain Ashur. Yeah. Yeah. And, if anyone wants some advice on how to pump up before a ninja course, just go talk to that yeah. guy. Because okay. um, when I'm in the green on. room, yeah, he, I mean, he looks fantastic. Um, and he he's, brings that energy to the green room as well, which is the room b- that we sit in before we go out and perform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everyone has different things, you know, like some people will be sitting there meditating yeah. and other people like Raina will be headphones on just dancing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I kind of, I kind of combine a bit of the both. So my process now is usually in the afternoon of the, the night that we're going to run, it might be like five o'clock, we'll all go out and we'll see the course for the very first time. Um, and we don't get to touch anything. We just get to see it from the sideline. Yeah. And the people running the course will perform each obstacle once, tell us the rules. If we have any questions, you know, we ask them there. Mm-hmm. And so during that process, for me, it's extremely, extremely important. Like watching that will, will heavily determine whether I'm going to be successful on that night or not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'll go back in the green room and I'll sit there and pretty quickly I'll sit down, put some headphones on, close my eyes and just visualize everything that I just yeah, saw. I say, so it's just yeah. like Visualizing stuck it, in yeah. my mind. Um, and I'll visualize you, like, myself. Literally like, yeah, like doing it. Like do you visually be like, okay, jump here, then scoop through that. 
Yeah. Have you? I mean, have you guys done visualization before or used it in any sort of way or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bits yeah. and pieces. Yeah. yeah. We don't have mm-hmm. anything major that you like. Not like, like, not like you. highly coordinated, like that <laughs> that relies sure. heavily on like mapping out like a course. You know, like it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'll pretty much, you know, as you described, I'll sit there and, and um, visualize myself on the starting platform, you know, even from like the, the wave, hey, how are ya? Little boogie move, whatever mm. kind of calms <laughs> me down. And then when I hear the beep, I'll visualize like, okay, well, what were the steps that were this and this? So then yeah. I'll start with my left, I'll move to my right, yeah, right. and then I'll kind of run through that. Um, if something goes wrong or if, if I think, well, what if something goes wrong in this part of the obstacle, what would I do in order to get my way out of it? Mm. I'll kind of visualize that sometimes wow. just so I don't freak out if it were to happen. Um, and then I go all the way through the course of my mind and then all the way till I hit the buzzer. And this is the important thing. Mm-hmm. I get to the end, I climb up the wall, I hit the buzzer and I get really excited. And I literally feel those emotions as I'm sitting there in the green room, closing my eyes and I get super pumped. Yeah. Oh my you know? gosh. This and is it's giving like me goosebumps. Yeah. He's like, he hasn't even, even done it yet. Kind of thing. <laughs> and he's won it. He's won it before yeah. he even did it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And I do that every single time before yeah. a course. So yeah. I'll make sure I visualize that success and really feel those emotions of success and get excited to actually feel that um, when it happens later that night. Mm. And it's worked pretty well. Just for me quickly. So far. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do you, would you say that you do that in other aspects of your life? You know, be that even just like say training or like, yeah, you're saying you do other competitions or just like now, like say, just like business now and stuff that you've like won, that. you've won, I mm. guess the pinnacle of Ninja Warrior, like you can return and you, and you did, um, you've thankfully won a nice big prize, but like <laughs> yeah. now, like what's coming next? Do you be like, all right, sitting down, Ben Paulson, what are we going to do today, baby? Are we going to crush the <laughs> yeah. day? Are we, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it's a great question. And <clears throat> I, I think, um, that whole visualization technique mm-hmm. and, you know, pe- people call it manifestation or people yeah. have different words for it. I mean, if you're religious, you'd probably call it like pr- prayer, yeah, you know, praying. prayer or yeah. praying mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's just my own version of that. Yeah. And, um, I feel like it, it's totally helped me in a lot of aspects of my life. Um, uh, not just, not just the ninja warrior side, but, you know, uh, at the moment, one thing that I'm really trying to, I guess, manifest and think about, well, there's two things. One is visualizing myself DJing in front of a huge crowd of people. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm being like, I want that moment. Like yep. I'm working hard on my music and that's one of my goals. Sick. Um, and the other one, which is a little hard to visualize, uh, which is reaching 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I'm slowly getting there. I'm like 65 at the moment. Yeah, Earlier yeah. this year, I was, at, I was at 20. So it's growing. Cool. And I have a, um, I actually printed off a plaque because when you hit 100,000 subscribers, yeah, you, you get, get this get plaque. Yeah, you get the big Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And big that's my, you know, that's, that's the goal at the moment. So I ended up photoshopping my name (laughs) as if I'd already received it printed it off and I've got it on my wall as like the safekeeping for when I get the real one you replace it with the real one I guarantee I totally yeah, oh, guarantee. that's happening. Guarantee. That is happening. It's going to happen, you know? Yeah, and, I, and I did that when I was at a thousand subs. So it's yeah. working. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I want to like, let's go. We haven't even spoken about this, but so you've done five seasons. You're onto your sixth season of Ninja Warrior. Mm-hmm. First, second and third season, you were not the winner. Yes. How did that shape season four? Like yeah. run us through. Mm. I want a timeline. Like how do you you know, keep showing up every single season and going, I am like, this is mine. This yeah. is mine. Like, was it the manifestation, yeah, yeah. self-belief? Like, where are you, where were you at? Um, I think for me, I mean, season one was just like, Bit I just want to get on the show. Yep. My expectations yeah, yeah. were just like really low. Yeah. And so um, I, I think I ended up placing in the top 10 season one, which I was really chuffed about. And I'm yeah, like, whoa, awesome. this is crazy. Um, and so season two was more of like a, I just want to back up season one and test my skills. Like I was probably a bit more of an ego in season two. I'm like, come on, you know, I was just, I was like top 10 season yeah. one. Yeah. Here we go. There's, I'm getting recognized, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. um, things are happening. And so <laughs> unfortunately for me, I also backed it up in season two and, and placed slightly even higher. Yeah. And then season three happened, uh, which moving into season three, I really started to think, this is like, this is such a great opportunity. Like yeah. I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm swinging around having mm-hmm. fun and they're filming me doing it yeah. and yeah. I can potentially win a huge amount of money for it. Like this is crazy, Hell right? Yeah. Um, so I thought 
maybe this is a good opportunity for me to actually just go for it. Yeah. And do I actually think I could win this? Like, yeah. Or am I just kind of playing the game of TV and blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. And so I sat down with myself and, and started to kind of think about it during my meditation. And, and I was like, yeah, I think I can win this. And I think I should really try and go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so moving into season three, I was like on a different mental level, mm-hmm. like, let's go, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had my worst season ever. Right. And you're like, what the hell? What's yeah. all this manifestation stuff? It doesn't work. Yes. It's all BS. This is cool. Though. Um, like you're being completely vulnerable here and honest. Like it didn't work out, yeah. but did you, you, I mean, obviously you didn't quit. Let's get to the punchline. No, you didn't quit. <laughs> um, you know, so, so during that phase and, and I fell in like the second course and there's like five or six courses all up. Yeah. So I felt pretty early yeah. and it, it really hurt and it sucked. And, and I think, what I learned from that is pr- prior to that season, I'd never really felt, you know, the, the uh, like the, f- the failure side of Ninja because mm. I'd always done quite well. And so now that I'd failed quite early, I realized, you know what, I can actually get through this. I worked my way mm. through it. I, I got over those emotions and that kind of like almost depressive stage and I got my way out of it. And I was like, that wasn't so bad after all, you know, like mm. even in the worst case scenario, I know I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And I think that was the lesson that I needed to learn in order to just be completely relaxed of any outcome in season four. Yeah. It's um, like you nearly had no expectations because you were like, fuck, well, surely it couldn't be worse than season three. Yeah. Then Yeah. 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 I think, I think that was, I had to fail in season three in order to win in season four, like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think I could have just smoothly gone into season three and just taken the Blitzed win it. without experiencing the downside. And cause I was always a little bit afraid to fail because yeah. yeah. of that ego side of, I want to back it up, want to back it up. And so when it happened, I was like, okay, I don't care about this anymore. It's mm-hmm. happened. It's over and done with. Let's go full send in season four. Yes. Full and send. Um, yeah. And full so, send he did. So yeah. Cause what I'm, what I'm <laughs> reliving visually right it, i feel as though this is like a movie playback ben polson rocks up season four he crushes everything gets to the end and you're versing charlie right mm-hmm. and it's mount midori yep. armor and you're I'm, charlie, I'm, uh, charlie and zach so there's three of us yeah. so three of you and you got to climb what 50 or is it 25 meters how how big is it it was it was, it was 20 yeah, meters in 30 this. seconds i want to know run us through mount midori armor but i feel like as you're pulling there's like this flashback of every season and like it just like it's just it's been a movie. like yeah, it's like it's a full on movie. Season one, season two, <laughs> drops on the salmon ladder. Season three, season four, he's pulling, he's pulling, and then <laughs> the big like, were you counting while you were climbing? Were you counting the seconds to know that you would? No, I, it was yeah, suspenseful. So the whole like they did, they armor in itself really is, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did it have three ad Callum, breaks as well before <laughs> he got up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Callum, your visualization is incredible. So you've obviously practiced a bit. Oh, uh, it's it's enough. Um, it's a, it's so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so skipping all the way to the final stage of season four, and for those that are listening that don't know, it's 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 a twenty meter rope climb mm. in thirty seconds, um, and it's called Mount Midoriyama, and I think it's. It's from the old Japanese place where they used to do it, which was, I think the location was called Midoriyama or yeah. something like that. I can't remember. Mm. Anyway. Mm. Um, and um, so before we did the rope climb, mind you, one thing we haven't talked about is that by this point in time, we'd already done stage two and stage three of the grand final. And then we moved swiftly into, so we'd already done two full stages. We're pretty tired. Like same day. 5 yeah, is this same day? Oh my God. Yeah, this is all the same day. So it's 5 a.m. and oh. I still hadn't even climbed to the rope, <laughs> right? So sun's like coming up soon and we're knackered. And for me, the, the hardest part was the adrenaline dumps. Like for sure. when you go oh, through yeah. a huge, awesome thing, you, yeah. your adrenaline's pumping and then it dumps on you and you just feel like you're hung over. Yeah. And so- I had that immediately after stage two, massive adrenaline dump and then yeah, built yeah. up adrenaline to do stage three, dumped again. Mm. And for me, one thing that comes back when I'm sleep deprived and stuff like that is my anxiety. It's just yeah. like skyrockets. Sure. Of course. Um, so I was standing there um, getting ready for the mountain and I was like, I'm either going to have a I freaking know. panic attack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm either going to have a panic attack or I'm going to achieve the greatest moment of my life. I'm yes. not sure. Um, <laughs> so... For, for me, I'd, I'd built up the rope climbs for a long time and, and like years leading up to that, probably the start of season two, I started practicing rope climbs. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason was was that I didn't want to get to Mount Midoriyama 
and not be able to climb a rope. It would just be yeah. the biggest regret in my entire life yeah. to be like, I'm here and I didn't practice. Like, so yeah, sure. I was fortunate enough to, to put in the time and, and do the practice. And Hell I was yeah. also very lucky that the other two athletes, Charlie and Zach, both had never, ever really practiced rope climb, which mm -hmm. is lucky for me. Yeah. Um, so I was, uh, I was secretly confident that I yeah. might have, yeah. uh, you, you know, know yeah, for sure. had it in the bag at that point. But, um, but when I did my climb, so I'm standing there, the beeper goes and I'm just hustling, right? I'm going, yeah. going, going, climb up. And I've got my technique down, all these you know, intricate things I'm focusing on as I'm doing the climb. And I get to the top and I hit the buzzer. And at the time, they didn't show this in TV, but at the time, what they told us was that we would each go one after another. I actually went first, even though they showed me last on yeah. TV. Uh, well, of course. Um, you know, Emotionally the magic of TV. Um, <laughs> Keeping and, us on the edge of our said, seats. They said, each of you will go. And then um, if you get to the top and you hit the buzzer, if fireworks go off, that means you've done it under 30 seconds, but we won't tell you what, what your time is until yeah. you've all gone. And so we each went and we <clears throat> each had the fireworks go off. That's amazing. And so at this point in time, <laughs> right? All three of us are like, whoa, what the hell? We've right? all this won. Is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. um, <laughs> and so that's when you start to get nervous because you're like, it's the title on the line and it's also $400,000, which I mean, is absolutely. nothing to sneeze at. Wow. Um, and so we're all standing there and they told us at one point, they're like, one of you, uh, sorry, two of you are literally one second apart. Down to the millisecond, you're one second <gasps> apart from each other. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's almost like made for TV at this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and at so the anyway, time, they've got like a briefcase with literally 400K in front of you. Like, <laughs> yeah. What have you got to get? <laughs> from deal or no deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. We're standing there, um, and then they and then they announced my name, and oh, I was cool. just like, Gita. "Holy moly!" And, this and at is the happening. time, like, you know, a lot of people would get quite emotional, but for me, I was just in such crazy shock and yeah. also just sleep deprived. Like I hasn't and I was slept like, in twenty four hours. He's just been <laughs> give him a break. the whole day. <laughs> Don't hit him with this. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I was chuffed and I was, I was super stoked. Um, unfortunately, that's when COVID was really starting to hit. So there was yeah. like barely anyone there to yeah. kind of celebrate. There was no crowd. There wasn't even a photographer to take proper photos. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was it was as awesome as it was. It's not like a full like stadium of people going like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but man it, yeah it was awesome it was great dude I'm like, like I'm I'm jacked that's, I'm fully pumped now that's inspiring I want to go <laughs> and, I want to go and do some deadlifts or something like huge right now I just I feel fired okay. up <laughs> you go and do that please <laughs> thank you <laughs> see ya uh, um yeah that is actually incredible what an I love awesome that achievement yeah that's so cool to know the actual but like it's always the, the case like I mm. love you know we do have to fail in order to yeah. Like, s actually enjoy our successes. Yeah. Because if we consistently are going through life, kind of just, you know, um, it, uh, gradually, you know, climbing up a ladder, then yeah. it, we mm. never see the reward. But when we fail and we get back up, we're like proud of ourselves. Like you must have been so proud. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. You know, um, <clears throat> I remember the, <clears throat> I remember the very next morning. Um, I was kind of. This is like where it actually kind of hit me was the next mm. day and I woke up and I'm, and I'm sitting there, um, in, in the hotel room with my partner, Olivia. And, um, I'm kind of just like eating this breakfast, which is like beans on toast, just thinking about like, mm. whoa, what just happened, you know? Mm. And then this like sad piano song come on and I was like, <laughs> damn those emotions. Ugh. And then I just started <laughs> bawling my eyes out while eating baked beans and, and my partner like looked, <laughs> Olivia looked over and she's like, Which damn, they concerned. must be some good baked beans, you know? <laughs> you have, must have missed them. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I, for me, I was just thinking back to I was definitely thinking back to like my younger self, like yeah. going through high school and dealing with all that stuff. But, but even slightly after high school when I was going through a lot of anxiety issues mm. and just like, I was at the point where I just couldn't barely even drive to the shops and go and get some milk because wow. I was so anxious about being alone in the car and the drive. Yeah. And I was anxious about bumping into someone that I might know and have to have a conversation <laughs> with them because my social anxiety was bad. And, and I was like, how did I go from there to being on national television doing interviews yeah. and then winning this? Like, it's just crazy, you know? Like, yeah. so it, it just got me in the feels there and I was just really appreciative of and it. And even, even now, um, like going, say, into YouTube as well, like you've been on TV, but like putting yourself out there, creating mm. content, 
Um, and, and obviously being on YouTube, you know, it's engaging sort of stuff. So like you're always coming up with obviously new content, new ideas, putting yourself out there, mm-hmm. editing videos yeah. nonstop. And it, it doesn't just happen in a day. And the ideas don't just go like, oh, I'm going to film this today. Um, so like kudos <laughs> to you as well for like yeah, keeping on thanks. building on top of everything else. It's not like yeah. you've taken a gap year. You know what I mean? Like you're still competing <laughs> and you're still grinding. So yeah. let's go yeah, 100K. Thanks, yeah. 100K, yeah. I'm yeah, here for this. We're going to celebrate. Well, we I mean, will bring fireworks to will you. Will you sub? Yeah. <laughs> For two subs right there now. You there you go. We're going to oh, yes. subscribe. And Hell then yeah. Thanks, Anyone guys. listening, get over there. Ben, tell us about your YouTube. Yeah. What do you normally... What are some videos that you're posting? Yeah. Where are we mm. at? Yeah. Um, uh, appreciate the shout out, by the way, guys. You oh. know, those extra two We're subs always is like, here. Yes. Yes. We're always it's here for shout me. outs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. Um, as as kind of Callum was saying, is I wanted to carry that momentum forward from the show. Yeah, totally. And it, it was definitely a moment of like, what am I going to do now? Because all of a sudden, before I won Ninja, I was hustling kind of different work here and there and trying to do like freelance videography or find a company to work for. And I was doing yep. interviews. And then I win and I'm like well, I do now have $400,000 just, and it literally just arrived in one notification on my phone, by the way, which was terrifying. Don't. Did you screenshot it? And just like- I screenshotted it, yeah. <laughs> is this your background now? I would be having that as my screensaver. Like net, net bank just like comes up, it's like $400,000. Oh, literally, it was, net, it was ComBank, net bank just going like, yo, uh, here's 400,000. So wow. yeah, it, it was a little bit uh, scary though, because like- I can imagine. Yeah. Like, c- to be completely honest, before that moment, I'd never had- uh, a 10,000, even $10,000 sitting in my bank account yeah, at yeah. once just oh because I'd earn God. money and then I'd travel or I'd earn money and I'd do this. And, and yeah. so to have that amount of money was pretty terrifying. Um, and we, we, we can talk about, we can talk about the money another time, but um, <laughs> yeah. well, whenever you want really, but, um, essentially I wanted to transition, um, that kind of mentality of well, what am I going to do now? How yeah. am I going to spend yeah. my time? And I wasn't so motivated to hustle for random jobs, um, which was in a way it was like, you know, uh, I think people are motivated from two things, either desperation or inspiration. And I wasn't mm-hmm. desperate for money anymore. Yeah. So I wasn't really motivated to try and find that work. Um, mm-hmm. so I needed to be inspired by something. And, um, I think for me, I've always liked YouTube and, and I've always thought I could do that if I really wanted to, yeah. but yeah. there's Not just so sure. many limiting beliefs holding you back. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I got time and money now. The two things that everyone wants in the, in this world, yeah. uh, how am I going to spend it? So I started to just do videos and it started really slow, but I believe that if I just hustle and just keep working at it, keep working at it, it'll build up. And, and I just love doing it. You know, it's yeah. so much fun. Just yeah. like doing podcasts like this. I really yeah. enjoy doing this stuff. You know, it's like, I was never doing it to earn money or anything. Yeah. yeah. When it's a, like, when it's a passion, you could either get paid or not get paid. It's like I enjoy mm. doing this so I could do this in my spare time yeah. or I could do this for a full-time job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think right, it, yeah, it also yeah. translates. Um, like, obviously, <laughs> oh, you're a legend, um, and people seeing you <laughs> on on TV, right? And they're like, "This mm-hmm. dude is is like, he's cool. I want to know more." And yeah. Then even what you're talking about having that community at the gym, like that's obviously in person. But I think mm-hmm. I feel as though where YouTube's sort of going now is like it is huge community. Like if you subscribe to someone, it's like they're like you know they're your mate but like you would tune in every week to watch your video and be like thank you like um i think it's a cool sort of like you are a part of like you know i'm subscribed to a dude on youtube that like thousands of people millions of people are and you kind of like you feel like you're in a little community exactly and that's what you said before ben like you said that the reason why you started at ninja academy is because you're like wow this is actually a sick community and like now look at you you're building yourself a community and like that's actually epic yeah, I didn't think about it like that, but I guess it's, yeah, you're totally right. Um, yeah. It does become a bit of a community of people, which, you know, it's, <clears throat> I think it's just, it's not as obvious um, of a community to me because to me, they're just, they are just numbers on a screen and I know they are people, Yeah. yeah. but it's hard to kind of quantify that. Whereas if you walk into a gym and you see those people yeah, every day and someone's fist bumping um, you. Or but yeah, you're like, totally yeah. right. And <laughs> yeah, but you're totally right. I can't exactly, you know, um, <laughs> catch up with these people or I yeah. don't know, like maybe that's something I could set up in the future, but, but um, it, it really was about trying to just pass on my knowledge. And, yeah. and I think a, a lot of the fitness information on YouTube can be, can maybe be not so great and especially social media in general. Totally. Um, It's overwhelming. um, Agreed. 
yeah, like the Instagram, Instagram people, which, and there's nothing wrong with people posting like photos of their body or doing mm. anything like that. What I wanted to try and educate people is more about like, it's not necessarily what you see on social media, but it's how you choose to react to it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. people are going to yeah. be posting whatever they post. Oh, and, and some people yeah. look at it and go, you're a douchebag. And other people will go, I'm inspired by you. Yeah. So what that tells me is that it's not what they're posting, it's how people are reacting. And so yeah, yeah. I just wanted to teach people like, that's you know, you got to choose your own reaction instead of just like, yeah. Yeah, um, that's amazing. Yeah, it's all about that mindset. And I'm even, mm. even thinking like, you know, it sort of speaks volumes to you when, you know, you imagine like anxious Ben and mm, social like anxiety, but like now someone who has that sort of anxiety can sit in front of a screen and be like, mm. oh, my guy, you know, see you and feel like they've got someone to relate to, especially if we're talking totally. spectrum sort of stuff. But mm. I, I mean, I think it's it's sick. Like, I mean, I learned from you the other day on how yeah. to do a hundred, hundred second hang. There you go. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You're learning. So yeah, education is key. The hook key. grip, education. which I'm sure you use um, in uh, that hook grip, which you're using uh, lifting as well. So yeah, mm. yep. yeah. That's and then right. and then little engage to anyway. We'll have to do it. We'll have to have a little <laughs> do a little demo with demo, each other. Yep. There you go. Um, okay. Well, Ben, <laughs> let's jump in. We have asked on our um, Gold Gym Instagram. Uh, Mm -hmm. we've put up a little question box and we've got some questions from the followers, the listeners. So I really like this one. This one's my fave. What do ninjas eat and have you ever killed anybody? (laughs) That's tippy top. Like we need to know. The followers are wondering. We're just 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 jumping from like here to here to here. (laughs) Bait beans to murder. (laughs) Yeah. Ninjas do. Ninjas Um, fucking karate chop. Okay, they do. (laughs) Well, let's find out for yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> look. From the source himself. <laughs> wow, what a nin- what a ninjas eat. I mean, you know, I won't go into uh, heavy detail, but I, I keep it pretty pretty simple. I'm a pretty plain kind of guy, but I think that's why it's pretty effective for me. For me and diet, my main thing is I just need to make it easy for myself yeah. to. I think that's healthy. everyone's kind of. Um, yeah. I think far too many people try and per- perfect a habit that they haven't even started and they get yeah. super motivated and they try and like buy all these veggies and do this and then it doesn't last. Totally. For me, I'm more realistic. I'm like, I know what my patience is like and my tolerance for trying to cook perfect things all the time. Totally. It's not high. So I just yeah. need to make it easy for myself to to get the, that nutrients in my body. So like ultimately yeah. just something you can adhere to, just like straight up yeah. adhere to something that's yeah. working. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah instead of kind of yo-yoing and being perfect and then like giving cool. it all all yeah, up yeah. and going crap and you know um and then and uh kill streak have is i killed anyone kill, let me just kill streak try and record remember if what is it zero or are we yeah, talking um i mean if we're talking call of duty because if we're talking if we're talking call oh, of duty what's your kd then, uh, you know what's the kd yeah. <laughs> we can't no okay we won't go there. um um <laughs> i want to know about training though because yeah. yes i mean i've like when i say i've done cali i like i dabbled in cali uh in calisthenics mm-hmm. right and you know yep. training like five times a week was demanding on the body just doing pure body weight stuff um anything from you know pistol squats to pull-ups or mu- muscle-ups anything like that how many yeah, the times peeps, the peeps want to know how many hours yeah. of training do you do a week and are we talking you know yo- like considering when we we're talking training we're t- talking like we anything want it from all. crossfit to yeah. pull-up sessions mm. at home in the afternoon just to, to yeah. cool down you know mm. to yoga yeah um, Go on. Tell uh, us. i think du- during ninja season it's more of a I would say six, at least six times a week, five, six times a week, for, like during ninja season. And it'll be yeah. predominantly based around um, muscular endurance kind of stuff. Um, and then when it comes to like the off season, like at the moment, what I'm doing um, is I'm doing probably like four to five days worth of CrossFit, maybe only one day of ninja specific. Yeah. Um, wow. And then extra stuff on the side. I think it's changed a lot over the years and it's even changed a lot since I won Ninja because Mm -hmm. my motivation isn't as high to train as hard for Ninja. Um, So I think, yeah, I don't know. Uh, For me, I just have to enjoy it. That's the number one thing. Like if I'm not having fun or if I'm not enjoying it, then I just don't last. And I think that's like most people. So it doesn't matter what the exercise is. It's whether you you have fun doing it. And if if for some people that's just yoga or freaking, I don't know, like, monkey karate or whatever you want to do Ooh, like yeah. I just made that up but that's not even a thing monkey but karate. but there you go you you now can uh, you now can host a monkey karate session if you like <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> just dabble um, yeah, that's it and from there like if say someone wanted to get started just your mm-hmm. average Joe Blow truck driver wanted to get into Ninja Warrior what, what yeah. would we do 
What, what yeah, should I do? truck driver. Yeah, to all the truck drivers out there that want to do To the ninja. truckies, please listen <laughs> in. Uh, truck drivers of Australia. <laughs> Yes. What do we do? Uh, I was watching that show last night, the whole, the whole like truck drivers thing. It was actually crazy. Oh, yeah, that is a good show. That, that actually is a good yeah. show. Crazy. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah. So to all the, you know, the newer people that want to get into it, I mean, first and foremost, like th- there are actually a lot of ninja gyms around yeah. more than people think. Yep. And so just go to Google and type in ninja warrior gym. Um, I'm shocked at how many people message me asking me where a Ninja Warrior gym is. And then I just tell them, and then just, I end up Googling them and just telling Google? them. So you just send back. Yeah. Like, sometimes I have when I'm in a bad <laughs> mood, I feel like a bit of a douchebag, but, um, <laughs> so find, a, find a, a Ninja gym, which is nearby. Um, and if you don't have a Ninja gym nearby, uh, not to sell my own program or anything, but a couple of years ago, Olivia and I came up with the Ninja Blueprint, which is an online thing, which teaches you a lot about Epic. the fundamentals oh, and yeah. mindset of Ninja. And it is honestly a great resource for people to go and learn Ninja the fundamentals. Blueprint. It's okay. yeah. Ninja Blueprint. That's so, amazing. Um, and, uh, and, and contact ninjas. Ninjas love to talk to new ninjas. So cool. hit up anyone on Instagram or whatever and, and just ask me a few questions. Love That's that. That's amazing. Okay. Let's, let's get into the finisher. Yeah. All right. Da-da. So we have some rapid fire questions. Don't think. You just need to answer. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Number one is if you could do one exercise for the rest of your life, what would it be? Burpees. <gasps> wow. I'm shook. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah. Who would your dream fitness coach be? Dream fitness coach. God. Um, I would say The Rock. Ooh. Just learn <gasps> from The Rock. Great choice. That is good. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a really good choice. Okay. <laughs> Stuck on an island with one food source. What is it? It's got to be sushi. <gasps> good choice again. That's I mean, I don't know where you'd find sushi on an island, but you know. You can make it. We've it's got to be sushi. Resources. We didn't, we didn't have parameters to that, but yeah, yeah I like yeah, it. Sushi. Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, most inspiring ninja that you've had across, you know, the, the seasons. Uh, look, apart from my partner, Olivia, um, I would say mm. that um, some of the ninjas in America, um, oh, that's a tough question because the, the guy that actually comes to mind is in a bit of hot water right now. Right. Um, but for those in the ninja community, we'll probably know who he is. Um, but other than that, I would say, um, uh, yeah, I would just have to say, yeah, probably my partner, Olivia. Go, yeah. Olivia. Yeah. You go, girl. Love you, go, babe. Go, girl. That's, I like that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's well, cute. this might be the same answer, but who is the best person to work out with? <laughs> yeah, uh, good question. I think, um, well, for me personally, yeah, probably my housemates and my partner, which, yeah. you know, I'm in a house full of ninjas. It's a ninja super house here. So wow. uh, there's five of us and we all like train ninja together. Ninja compound. Yeah, there'll be people like when you walk into your house, Ben, just like swinging. Whoa, yeah. whoa. They don't, they don't walk, <laughs> they just much. hang. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this tees off that, who's the worst person to work oh, with? Oh, the worst person to train with? Oh, like anyone that just doesn't stop talking. Um, I think it's the same in like a gold gym. If you're, if you're there for a training session and people just talk, 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 talk and yeah. don't do any reps, that's yeah. probably the, my least favorite. Sounds familiar. I'm looking at him. <laughs> Bro, at least I do stuff too. <laughs> at least we can uh, talk and work. Called out. <laughs> well, the last question we've got is the biggest challenge ahead of you this year. Biggest challenge ahead of me, um, God, that's a great question. I think, I think the challenge, the biggest challenge every year is deciding whether I want to come back to Ninja Warrior and try and try and back it up. Yes. Um, the yeah. decision's getting harder and harder every single year, yeah. um, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that along with what am I going to do in the, within the next five years? I have no idea. So that's a very tough question. Ask me in a few years. Okay, okay. well, we'll report back. <laughs> yeah, we definitely yeah, will. Hell yeah. yeah. Ben, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Let the people know at home where we can find you. Sure, yeah. Um, look, just type my name in, Ben Paulson on Google and I'm sure it'll probably come up. That's a weird flex, isn't it? But it's probably you know the what? easiest if way I to- I could flex that, I would. <laughs> yeah. Have you Googled me? Cause I'm actually top on the top. <laughs> my photo well, comes up. My name up. was like John Smith. I probably couldn't flex that That's hard. true. Yeah. True. yeah, Ben Paulson's pretty. But yeah. Um, yeah, look, all socials, just my name, Ben Paulson, P-O-L-S-O-N, um, mm-hmm. including YouTube and all that yeah. kind of yeah, all yeah. That good stuff. So, but yeah, Emily and Callum, thank you so much guys. It's actually been what an awesome. Absolute it's pleasure. our pleasure. Yeah, thank out. you so much. How, for being how, our first guest. How did you find it as the first guest? Were you nervous or what? 
No, I was excited. <laughs> I came in this morning. I was G'd up. Like, I saw Emmett probably like seven o'clock and we were fired. I think we did a couple of like, I did a couple of like flare. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 We were, <laughs> like, yeah. we were excited. This morning was a good day. Yeah. It was a really good day. Good. Yeah. It's good. been great. Thank you so much, man. An absolute honor. Um, thank you for being the first guest and thank you for being on to the good as gold. Peace. Of course. Thanks, Peace guys. Out. Appreciate having me on. You. Bye. Thanks so much, guys, for joining in to the Good as Gold podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a little like, subscribe to our channel and leave us a review because that will really help us. If you are enjoying these episodes, don't forget to share our content. Yep. We can't wait to be delivering you more episodes. Yeah. Catch ya. <laughs> what? No need to say yeah. Yeah. I'm backing you. Just leave it. One more time. We can edit. Thank you. Fuck.